Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty, my co-host Cletus. In this video, I'm going to do uh, just a quick little, some tips about how to debug a breaker tripping in your circuit breaker panel, say in your apartment or your house. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this one is um, that uh, this has actually come up many times and people are kind of mystified when I sort of start going through the process of narrowing it down to discover what the problem is. Um, First, a little disclaimer, um, uh, I cannot be held responsible if you or anyone you know or love or think about it either is injured, dies, explodes, or whatever. Um, yeah, if you're not absolutely sure what you're doing, call an electrician. But um, many times I found these problems can actually be resolved um, pretty easily with just some basic testing. So. In uh, eek number five, I talked about um, uh, circuit breaker panels, so you might want to check the description and watch that video if you have no idea what, what a circuit breaker panel does. Um, if necessary, once you've watched that, uh, let's say you have a situation where you have a breaker tripping in your panel, and you flip the breaker back on, as everyone does usually, and it trips again. Uh, so, okay, what do you do then? Well, um, so the deal is, let's say this is your row of breakers in your panel. You have your differential breaker. Each one of these is powering an entire row, right? Okay, so uh, first of all, let's say if this is on, these guys are powered. If this is off, none of these are powered. If this guy is on, and these are on, each each circuit output here is powered. But if I if this one's on, and this one is turned off, then power from this is going into here, but it's not actually going from here out to, say, your living room, right? Okay, so uh, the first thing and most likely thing that will happen is that the differential breaker slash GFCI slash RCD will trip. Okay, what do you do? Well, normally, like I said, what you do is you go, I'll just turn it back on, and you turn it back on, and it instantly trips. At that point, you want to stop turning it on and off, because the more these things trip, uh, the quicker they tend to uh, wear out, and they become slightly more and more sensitive, so that instead of tripping at 30 mils, they start tripping at like 28, and 27, 26. Um, essentially, they become more sensitive. So, if this guy keeps tripping then what you want to do is assume that since this guy is actually powering this whole row, you need to look at each one of these breakers, usually each one of which is powering either like, say like this one might be for your washing machine, this one might be for your, you know, some outlets in your kitchen, and this one might be for your living room, right? Okay, so then what you want to do is turn all of these off and turn this guy back on, because now power is going from here into all of these guys, but they're not powered, right? Okay, this guy should then stay on. If he doesn't stay on, he's defective, so replace him if necessary. Uh, unless you really, really know what you're doing, uh, call an electrician and get it replaced. But at least you can now say, uh, I think the problem is this, blah, blah, blah. If this guy stays on, then what you do is you start turning each of these circuits on individually. So first you flip this one on. Wait a few seconds. Okay, it's fine, right? Then you turn this one on. Wait a few seconds. Okay, it's good. All right. Then you turn this one on, and when you do, this one immediately turns off. What that means is that this circuit, which I think I said was your living room, has a leakage current problem. This guy, since he's powering the entire row, is detecting 30 mils or greater of leakage current, um, which means now you know that the problem is in your living room. So then what do you do? Well, then what you do is you go to your living room. And let's say like this is your this is your living room, right? Here's your living room. And you know you have like, you know, power outlets. That's a good power outlet here, 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 and here, right? Um you you may have to actually like you kind of have to know what's connected to what, but it can be easy to, easy to figure out because you can use a little uh, a plug tester. I'll, I'll link to one of those in the description where you just uh, 
I have one. Oh, I don't think I have one here. Anyway, it's a little, it's a plug tester. You just plug it in, and if the lights glow properly, not only do you have power, but it's wired correctly. So uh, you can use one of those. It's very safe to test, um, like, say, if, if you flip that guy off, you turn your living room off, turn him back on, and he doesn't trip again, then you know it's in your living room, and you can plug this tester into each of these outlets, make sure they're dead, and go, okay, so it's something that's plugged into one of these outlets. So then what you do is you unplug everything from each of these four outlets. Now you may have, you may have, say, like a power strip here, right? And you may have another power strip here. Very good power strip. You need to actually unplug this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then you go back to your panel and you flip him on again. If it trips, there's a problem with either these outlets or the wiring between your breaker panel and the outlet. If it doesn't trip, then what you do is you plug in each plug one at a time. So first you plug this one back in, then you plug this one back in, wait a few seconds, then you plug this back in, nothing happens, then you plug this one back in, and when you do, whoosh, he trips, right? Okay. Then what you do is you go back and you unplug these three things, unplug all of them, and plug just the power strip in. Go back, flip this on, with nothing plugged into this power strip and just the power strip plugged into the wall, flip this on. It is entirely possible that when, when this power strip with nothing plugged into it is plugged into that outlet, your differential breaker will trip. I have actually seen this before. You can actually have a power strip that is screwed up with nothing plugged into it that has some kind of like fault inside that will cause leakage current that will cause your breaker to trip. So that's the next step. Make sure this power strip is not causing the problem. If he stays on, then one by one, plug these dudes back in. Doot. Wait a little bit. Plug this guy back in. Wait a little bit. Plug this guy back in. Whoosh! He trips. Guess what? You just determined that whatever is plugged into this outlet is what's causing your breaker trip. So you can unplug this guy, flip him back on, wait a few seconds, and if it doesn't trip, then you know that the gizmo plugged into this power strip, plugged into this outlet, connected to this breaker, that's where your leakage current is coming from. That is the basics of debugging, and it just requires a few little trips, And but it's kind of, you have to sort of logically narrow it down to whatever is causing your problem. Right, so it can be a little bit more complicated than that, because you can actually have a situation, um, <clears throat> okay, um, there are two things actually. The first one is that I have actually seen a situation where this exact problem was occurring. It was a gizmo plugged into a power strip into a power outlet. The problem was that the gizmo in question that had failed was not on. It was, a, it was actually a, um, a, a room humidifier. There's like cold evaporative humidifiers for humidifying the air, and there's hot humidifiers where it heats the air and kind of shoots out steam, right? It was one of the steam kind. It was a hot, uh, a hot water humidifier. Um, and what had happened was, if this hot water humidifier was actually plugged in to that circuit, even though it wasn't turned on, it was causing the differential breaker, ooh, sweet Jesus, the differential breaker to trip. Um, that is also a possibility. Because uh, what happened was, um, when, once the thing was taken apart, basically there was like gunk in the water that had built up and it had sat uh, all summer and was not had not been used but was left plugged in and because there was gunk inside somehow the gunk absorbed moisture from the air like over the summer and in the winter time even though it hadn't been turned on yet water got somewhere it shouldn't be things started corroding and there was a leakage current to ground so that even though the thing was not turned on and had not been used in months because it was actually plugged in to the power strip, which was plugged in to the wall socket, that was causing the differential breaker to trip. That's the first gotcha. 
You have to think about these things. Uh, the second gotcha is it may not be one single device that is causing the problem. It could be a combination of two devices that have failed. So when you're plugging and unplugging things, you may have to narrow it down and discover that when your old television is plugged in and your specific floor lamp is plugged in, both of those devices together, one of them might be leaking, say, 15 mils, may have 15 mils of leakage current, and the other may be leaking 15 mils, which combined, when they're both plugged in, either turned on or not, combined together, that gives you 30 mils, which, tri which trips your differential breaker, your GFCI or your RCD. So sometimes this works, usually this works, because it's one thing that's causing a problem. Um, yeah, sometimes not. Okay, uh, the, the last thing is, okay, so we covered debugging uh, and our uh, differential breaker tripping. What happens if a normal circuit breaker is tripping? This is actually usually much simpler because if, if a normal thermomagnetic circuit breaker is tripping, that usually indicates one of two things. Um, either there is a short or some kind of catastrophic failure <clears throat> inside the wiring in your walls, in um, the gizmo that's plugged in, or you simply have too much crap plugged in and you're pulling more than the rated current. You're pulling more than 20 amps. That's actually pretty easy to figure out because um, you can look on the say you're running like a vacuum and a hair dryer and uh, whatever vacuum and a hair dryer and you have a say like a, a 16 amp circuit at 230 volts um, well 230 volts times 16 is 3680 something like that so you have like 3.6 kilowatts that you can pull on that circuit before your 16 amp breaker will trip so if you plug in say um, your vacuum cleaner and it's for some reason pulling like 2,000 watts, and then you plug in your hair dryer on the same circuit, and it's sucking 1,800 watts, well, you can't use both at the same time, because that's pulling 3,800 watts, so your circuit breaker trips. That's usually pretty easy to figure out, because power equals voltage times current, and usually you can look on the little nameplate on your gizmos and see how much power they actually draw. So you can, you can kind of say, okay, stop, what's going on, that's plugged in, that's plugged in on this circuit, you know which breaker it is, it's your living room. Oh, it's because we don't usually use the hair dryer in the living room while we're vacuuming at the same time, that's too much current. And then all you do is unplug your hair dryer, plug it into a different circuit in a different room, you can use your hair dryer and you're done. There is the possibility that when a, a normal circuit breaker trips, there's some sort of catastrophic failure, like I said, wire shorted together, um, blah, blah, blah. But the whole point of the, the standard thermomagnetic circuit breaker is to prevent overcurrent conditions that can melt the wiring in your walls, set your house on fire, and burn everything to the ground. So, um, I think that was pretty much, that's pretty much everything. Hopefully with those handy tips, uh, you can debug your electrical problems uh, without uh, having to call an electrician, or if you do have to call an electrician, uh, at least you can tell them, okay, look, this is what I did. And not only would they be thoroughly impressed, but uh, you'll actually have something to tell them, which means they'll be at your house for less time, which means you'll save money. So, right, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. For more Techie Tipsy, Scotty's Tech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.